construction with futures. Have you ever thought about this, Mikey? I know that you've looked at a million different ways to say, okay, I've got the whole pie in front of me, whether it's $1,000 or $10,000 or $100,000, I got the whole thing in front of me. I'm going to put X percent in that asset class, X percent in that asset class, and so on and so forth. Have you ever thought about the idea of converting your portfolio to futures? I think a lot of people, when they figure out what futures are, they, they this kind of strikes them. Yeah. And I think this is, uh, for me, I think it's all about how can I get static delta because like options trading is very dynamic in nature when it comes to delta exposure and where your risk is and whatnot but um, when it comes to gaining static delta delta that does not change where if the market's up a dollar i'm going to make a hundred dollars if i'm long a, a small exchange contract where can i get my static delta in the products i want that to be in and how can i do it in the most efficient way possible and we've shown and you guys have shown many times that the small exchange is, is likely the best way to do that for the products that are offered absolutely and it at least just starts with futures like a small exchange obviously given that they have sponsored the content that mikey and i are currently speaking on they're going to have a pretty good look at this as well but just starting out with futures you tend to think of futures, and I know that Tom and a lot of the other personalities at the Tasty Trade Network have always kind of, they've moved this percentage around. I'm interested to see, Mikey, what your percentage is, but futures are largely held as a short-term tool, often making up a, a small portion of a, retail's, uh, a retail trader's portfolio, which I agree with in this traditional sense. Like, If you have 100%, you've got the whole pie in front of you, and you want a certain piece of that pie to be futures trading, day trading, swing trading, spread trading, kind of these faster ideas, then yeah, I'm probably, I, most people that email me or walk up to me on the street and ask this type of question, it's like, yeah, like between five and 25%. Now I'm definitely more biased because futures trading is kind of my shtick. Uh, here and is the thing that I know the most. So I'm probably closer to 50%. But most retail traders, I would say at most are contributing 20, 25% of their portfolio to future strategies. I mean, what do you think the number is for you? Yeah, I think it's I think it's right around there. And and it's not because um, you know, you can't afford to do it with the buying power. It's actually the opposite. Like you can get a ton of leverage and you don't have to put up the same amount of money. One of my friends actually was like, I want to have half a coin, half of a Bitcoin notional exposure, but I also want to have exposure to a bunch of different products that could bounce on a big move in Bitcoin. I was like, oh, okay, I have the perfect product for you. And yeah. that's the, uh, the, the coin product that you guys have, but also like micro features, you can do Half, five contracts of that. And there's your half coin notional exposure. And then we're like, wait, this only takes up like 10 grand in buying power. And I'm like, sure. yeah, uh, it's very efficient. And you can, you know, put your money to work and get that, that static Delta exposure, but still have money on the side for other things that you might want to do. And, and that's a super great point that is going to kind of be the common thread as we construct a portfolio here today, which is like, futures only make up a certain portion of your portfolio, not because they're expensive, quite the contrary, my friend, they are very inexpensive. And thus, like, you don't want to be having futures, like, oh, my futures trading is 100%, because it could actually, with the leverage, it could be 500, 600% of your actual account size, given that they're so cheap to trade. And so what I always tell people is like, all right, if you've got 10 grand, then I would only have uh, in terms of like buying power and like trading in futures, I would have less than 2000 or, or $1,000 tied up in futures because that 2000 or $1,000 is likely going to be controlling a product that is 10 times the size of that investment. And you don't want to over lever your account. And so, yeah, my, my initial point here is just, if you're going to be investing and trading options and trading futures, I would almost always make sure that the futures trading, the actual traditional active futures trading of day trading, scalping, all those different things, only taken up between five to 25% of your account. Now, 
Where can we use futures though in the rest of the construction? Because while I'd only want, like I say, five to 25% in like scalping S&Ps or, or, or uh, swing trading Bitcoin or these different things, you can actually use futures for that other 75% given it's extremely strong positive correlations to the other things that you're most likely long, like if you're long SPY ETF shares, Mikey, owning the futures is quite literally the same exact thing, only a cheaper price tag. Yeah. And this, I, the correlation here is actually insane. Like there's only a couple little blips here where you can see some white, but everything else is like really par, like one for one, par for where you're trying to get in SPY shares. And again, buying SPY shares, you're going to put up way more capital than having the uh, the e-mini e micro futures or even some of the, the smallest products that are available too. E exactly. Like this is two charts, people. Yeah. Like this is, <laughs> this is not, this is not uh, an error on my front. You're, there's that white line peeking through there is the SPY ETF shares, which are hugely pr popular and mm -hmm. which is uh, the first place that I tell most people to go is like, hey, I'm just opening an account uh, with Tastyworks or with Robinhood or with whoever. And it's like, what should I do? And it's like, well, you, you probably just want to buy some S&P exposure. That's, you know, diversified stock market and everything else. But when you've gotten to the level where you're thinking about options and futures, and you're willing to get a little bit more active to make your portfolio more efficient, you look at these numbers, Mikey, and it's like, well, why the hell aren't I holding futures instead of my ETF shares, especially if I'm an active trader who could use the capital savings that you're getting, um, it, it makes no sense to be sitting in the passive costly product. Micro S&P 500 futures, Mikey, give you 50 times the exposure of the S&P 500 ETF, each, each of those shares that is, for just five times the cost. And so you look at this and so essentially, if I wanted to create a portfolio that had, let's just round it off to about $25,000 worth of S&P 500 or just stock market exposure in SPY, that's going to cost me almost $13,000 to get that exposure. With the MES there, the micro S&P, that's costing me $1,000. I mean, the savings there are, are huge. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing um, especially if you're trading in um, an IRA or a cash secured account is that you're putting yeah. up the value that represents the same uh, monetary value as SPY going to zero. And we kind of like joke about this on, on the network where it's like, if SPY goes to zero, you know, I probably have bigger things to worry about. So <laughs> it just doesn't make a lot of sense to have to put up that same capital and have to have that money in play and not something that you can use for something else for such a extremely low probability uh, event. So I think it's another that's, way to think about it too. That's a great point. I'm really glad that you brought that up because it works its way into why do futures cost so little? And it's mm -hmm. because futures in the same way that options have dynamic deltas and they're moving back and forth, but futures have static deltas. Every, like Mikey said, to lead off the show, every dollar higher, I'm getting paid a dollar. Every dollar lower, I'm losing a dollar if I'm long. Uh, futures, though, they do weave in that dynamicism with the margining. And so that $1,300 is something that's calculated every single day. And they're saying, yeah, holding this product equates to on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and actually, I think it's, it's more of a, a few days at least, um, is it equates to about $1,300 worth of risk. And so we're going to only make you put up $1,300. Whereas, yeah, especially in an IRA account or even some of these traditional accounts that aren't uh, retirement oriented, but just are at less efficient firms, making you put up every single dollar of the S&P 500 in that ETF to hold that exposure is just kind of wild given that, yeah, like I, I, of course there could be a stock market crash, but to, but to think that I have to own this thing and thus I have to pay for every dollar of it from here to zero. Like if the stock market goes to zero, the brokerage that you're trading at is probably going to have, some, like it's yeah. going to be a rough ride down to zero for sure. Right. Um, totally I, so great point there. I, I like that you brought that up. 
But here's the problem with uh, with futures here is that they come in these huge, huge chunks. Even the micro, we joke about this all the time, um, micro e-mini S&Ps. There's, there's two diminutive ad- adjectives there. It's micro and it's mini. It's still a product that's about $23,000 yeah. per contract. It's, it's very big, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's kind of the, the catch-22 with a lot of these products where, there's still going to be larger products. And then even when you're moving into some of the even bigger products, like oil is one off the top of my head, like oil is a, you know, what is it now? Eight, where is it? 75,000, $80,000 product right now. So um, these products are not necessarily small, um, even if you're getting the leverage that make them smaller. So you still have to uh, keep your size in check. And of course, small exchange is going to help you do that. Yeah, and that that's the rub until recently. Like we we have in, in here uh, just to to offer the, um, the the fixes that we have. The SM seventy five is, I think, right now about a third, or even getting close to uh, a quarter of the size. No, no, a third the size of the micro S and P five hundred, and you get the same savings. Like I'm getting eight thousand dollars worth of stock with the SM seventy five for just nine hundred dollars, and so that's really nice that I can at least get a little bit more flexible. At the small exchange, we have equity index products that are six thousand dollars in size that cost you about five hundred dollars. We have one equity index product because pot stocks have gotten hit so bad. The small cannabis futures equity index future nine hundred dollars product that costs you less than $200 to trade. I can start to build my portfolio here in stocks. And then as we're about to get to in a second, outside of the equity asset class, Mikey, for just a lot less money. But that's not to say that we over leverage, right? Like you wouldn't tell your friend or anybody, you know, like, okay, you want to put 50 grand in the market. Well, maybe you were going to buy, you know, 50% 50% of it was going to be stocks. Well, I can get you $25,000 worth of stocks for just about, you know, $1,000 or, or even less than that. So what we're actually going to do for you is, is get you to buy like $200,000 worth of stock <laughs> with your 50 grand. Like you don't want to, you don't want to use this to over leverage, right? right? To just buy more stocks than you even have money in your account. Yeah. And it's all about just flexibility and having pun intended, the options to do what you want to do. And again, like I think the best way to think about this and the easiest way to describe it is, again, th- thinking of these products going to zero. It's going to be a very low probability event. But again, if you're putting up the capital in SPY, especially in an IRA account, it just doesn't make any sense to have to put up that, that capital. So what are the ways, what are the most efficient ways to get around that? And I think using futures and SM75 futures and small exchange futures is going to be one of those ways where you can get that same exposure, but not put the same capital up as if it's going to zero. But again, at the same time, you need to keep your size in check so that you're not super, super leveraged. Exactly right. Like it's it's a matter of use, utilizing your capital with the greatest efficiency, Mikey, but still planning for like, all right, if we do get an outlier move, I want to make sure that I'm not necessarily thwarting my whole account here uh, by over leveraging. It's just a matter of like, all right, if I wanted to get about $10,000 worth of stocks, I can do what's behind door A, which is going to cost me either five or $10,000 or door B cost me less than a grand to get that $10,000 of exposure. And then I can use my other nine grand to hedge that exposure. Now I've got money that I can go into markets and and sell calls and sell strangles or sell even smaller futures against my long stock position in a different futures product. And and I can use it for that. Or I can use it to diversify, which we'll get to here to conclude. I can use that other money to buy metals exposure, bond exposure, crypto exposure, these different markets that have low correlations to stocks that's what we always advocate to do with your newly found money here. And even with that, Mikey, I put together an, an example account here of $50,000. And what I've gotten in those first three lines is 80% of that account's exposure, 50% of it in stocks. So you've got about $25,000 worth of stocks in this example. You've got about $5,000 uh, or, or sorry, five to $10,000 there at the 10% uh, amount 
with metals, about 20% there in uh, bonds. And what you're able to do with futures using, this is all using small exchange equities, uh, commodities, and interest rate futures, you're able to get there 80% of that $50,000 account. So, I mean, in theory, that's $40,000 worth of stocks, metals, and bonds. You're able to do that, Mikey, with $45,000 left after the fact to do everything else that you want to do. And this is a great example of how futures should be used to create a more efficient portfolio, but not necessarily a more leveraged one. And then you can allocate that exposure after the fact with diversified alternate strategies. It's essentially saying, I've got 50 grand, I can use futures to create a portfolio of about $40,000 worth of stocks, metals, and bonds. And then what should just be uh, 20% left over in cash, $10,000 in cash. Actually, I've got 45,000 now to sell strangles, to sell calls, to do all these different things here since I used efficient tools like futures. Yeah. And getting deeper into the diversified alternative strategies, I think this is where you can kind of do what we showed last week on Monday, where you can become long a couple of uh, small exchange S420 contracts. And then to hedge, you can use this capital that's sitting on the sidelines to do something like sell a call in the MJ ETF, which is, I actually took that off last week because it reached 50% of, of profit on there. So I'm, oh, nice. I'm now basically long those S420 contracts, but I've taken off 25, 30 cents of the cost basis on that because I had the capital available to hedge against it. So this is where you can start going as you learn more about these products, as you learn more about active hedging. And it's just not something that's really efficiently possible with using those straight up static stock share deltas, especially in accounts like IRA accounts. Exactly right. I mean, in that example, it would be like fifty thousand dollar account. Well, you can spend you know twenty five thousand dollars on stocks and and you know uh, however much on metals and bonds, and you got none left over to do anything. But yeah, want, once want to once again nail in here that using futures doesn't mean like oh I've got fifty thousand dollars and now I've got an account that's three hundred thousand dollars worth of stocks. That's not what we look for. You can see in this example. You know, we're still only getting exposure that is less than the actual amount of the account. But then using all of that cash that we have on the sidelines, which should only be about $10,000, but thanks to futures is $45,000 left over to do interesting stuff like Mikey's talking about. Oh, I'll, I'll put on this, you know, pot stock play where I'm selling calls in an ETF against uh, the futures or, or I'm, I'm doing this other alternate uh, strategy. And, and that's what it's really about to construct your portfolio with futures is to do so with great efficiency that, so that you have money on the side to put into these other uh, strategies. So thanks so much for joining me here, Mikey Butler, on a Monday. Always fun to jump on and talk portfolio construction with futures here. Um, but that's all I got for you. Got anything uh, you want to hit on before we get out of here? How was your weekend? What did you do? Tell us one thing you did. Uh, I went to the Bulls game. And the Bulls won. Oh. And it was actually a, a great game. It was for my friend's bachelor party. And we bought these tickets like basically before the season started. And it just so happened that the Bulls were five and one and the Utah Jazz, who they beat, were also five and one. Um, so it was basically like an, an Eastern Conference, Western Conference mega battle. So we got lucky with with where the uh, the teams are at in the standings. But that's what I did. How was your weekend? That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, my weekend was great. I actually spent a portion of it with my good, good friend, Pete Molmet, who I'm about to jump on with. Um, uh, I'll tell you offline why we were hanging out. It's a good thing, all good stuff, but he gets kind of weird about, you know how people uh, at Tasty Trade get with like uh, personal stuff? Like once again, I say it's a good thing, but people are like, I don't want people knowing if it was my birthday or if, you know, my, you know, kid got married or anything like that. So I'll tell you offline, but yeah, I went to a steakhouse on Saturday with Pete and his uh, family for a special occasion. And oh, I don't, I don't eat meat uh, regularly anymore. I'm, I'm into like the tofu and all the whatever plant-based stuff I know make fun of me. Um, but I did make, uh, we went to Mastro's. Have you ever heard of this place? Yes, I have. 
Um, I've never been there. And I was told all week, like, oh, you're going to Mastro's with Pete. Like you got it. You got to go crazy. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go crazy. You destroyed your body is what you're saying. Oh yeah. Uh, (laughs) one seafood tower and a 40 ounce tomahawk steak later. I'm feeling, uh, I, 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 I've, I've recovered by now, but it was a lot of, uh, meat and seafood. So that's it. it. Beautiful. Anyways, my friend, thanks so much for joining me here on Small Stakes. we got Splash into Futures coming up next. An inside day to start the week, but some interesting activity across rates and equities especially, and also maybe something to do in commodities here. Oil is kind of going back and forth around $80, $85 a barrel. So we'll chop it up next, Splash into Futures. Thanks for watching, everybody.